Stephen. My Ethan Stephen. We are good. All right, awesome. Hello and welcome everyone to another captivating episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. And today's episode is a very special one. And we'd like to dedicate it to seasonal depression because for those of us watching, or those of you watching us on YouTube, you can see that Say Nothing is not with us. We do not have a special guest. It's just me and Mr. Phil. Mr. Phil, how's it going? Oh, I'm depressed right now. <laughs> you and me both. Uh, real quick, a funny story. It is around 10 o'clock in the evening, oh, and God. we had spent the last <laughs> two hours recording, uh, but unfortunately, my mic was not turned on. So now... Uh, yeah. <laughs> We've I was, I was uh, um, ranting about politics, about how I'm never going to rant about politics. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we checked the recording and it was um, it was just my mic, or me ranting about politics. But I mean, when I get ranting about politics, it's usually just, you know. Sure, yeah. So the conclusion to that is, here's how I feel, and I'm not going to rant. <laughs> uh -huh, here's yeah. how I feel. I think the best way, my point is that I love and I stand up for the human race, okay? Perfect. People, people like to get into this tribalism of segregating everybody. I love everybody. Everybody should be an individual. And I think anytime, right now, here's the cure. Listen to your buddy here. Nothing. Say it. When people mention anything about politics, don't take it seriously. <laughs> Turn off their microphone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one exception being, of course, we're big fans of the human race, without exception, uh, but we do have a particular fondness for our friends across the pond in Ireland. A special shout well, out course. to them. Um, you Really, we do this podcast for you guys, and just thank you so much for listening. We yes. hope you continue to listen uh, to these dumb Yankees, uh, figure out how to operate like recording systems and microphones. Well, well, that offends me when you say operate. Are you referring to surgeons or the video game? Sorry, no, I thought or the board game. I thought dumb Yankee would have offended you, but operate, operate, yeah, <laughs> operate. All right, thing. see, this is how this turn is how my you, mic off. This, this, <laughs> this, this is this is how you got to deal with politics. That, exactly. Anyway, we love everyone. We're happy to be here, uh, and I'm happy to announce that today's episode is sponsored by Yellowtail Brand Sangria, and uh, you will not get to see the first two hours we recorded. <laughs> but I'm about halfway through this double bottle, and I just, I feel awful. And I had White Castle for dinner, so a quick special thank you to our sponsors over at White Castle. Yeah. So if you're ever dealing with seasonal depression, and you're looking for that extra nudge off the building f of, of seasonal depression, just have some White Castle. Yeah, exa if you want to feel nauseous and sad, like White Castle and Yellowtail Sangria is the way to go. Folks, you've heard it here. Uh, hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. We would yep. not lead you astray. Yep. So I I have a funny story. Um, I got into a really large debate at work over cars. Okay. Um, I thought I I was so pumped up because I thought I had come up with the best fucking idea, the best invention. See, uh, have you ever watched Shark Tank? Uh, I have. Yeah. And you know how there's um. There's, there's. Do you have any episodes that you particularly like that you like to talk about? No, like I remember one where a guy's idea was he was going to make like an oil store for like cooking oils, like olive oils and things. Yeah, and he called it the Oilery. Yeah, and I thought that that was a shitty name, mm -hmm. but so that's like the one episode I can remember specifics. But, yeah, but continue. I had um one of the episodes that I I'll never forget. I I really liked it. Uh, only because I felt really bad for the guy who pitched it. And that's because, um, so, because right away, as soon as he pitched this idea, you know, it was set up for disaster. Yeah. It was a uh, post traumatic stress disorder Marine uh, who had been in Vietnam and he came up with this invention of pretty much it was a, you know, those construction cars that have the cherry picker on them? Yeah. It was one of those, but instead of a cherry picker connected to the end of it, it was like 60 used tires stacked upon on top of each other. And his point was that he really regrets that he was in Vietnam. It really, it, I felt bad because the entire cause, the entire story, it just touched you at the heart. You felt so bad for this guy. Yeah. 
and he said that there was a lot of mines in Vietnam that have not been set off. So there's just random children running around, stepping on them and getting blown up. So he developed this cherry picker car that pretty much puts recycled tires on top of the mine and completely absorbs the explosion. And it's like this whole time you're like, God, I fucking love this guy. And then the first, you know, that cocksucking fucking the, 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 the rich bald guy, I forgot what his name is. The guy was like the biggest dick on the show. Mm, you know, I, don't, I don't know. I know it's a it's Mark. Is it Mark? Is it's it? It's not Mark Cuban. It's uh. Is it Derek? Is it Todd? I I have no I idea what his name oh, is. I'm oh. just guessing here. Okay, no, no. It's it's I don't know. It's something. Yeah, it's something. But he, but he goes, how the fuck do you plan to market this? Yeah. How is this going to benefit setting off my? How is this going? Who who is thinking? What should I buy today? A D minor, you know. As in the guitar chord. But anyways, so I was thinking, you know what would be really fucking awesome that I don't understand why nobody has? And everybody thought I was really stupid for it. And then, of all people, Kelly completely shut me down for it. It was, why don't people completely customize their cars to the fullest fucking extent? What do you mean? What I mean by that is, I went to an auto museum a few months ago where they had a shitload of 50s classic cars. Okay. Great cars, shit that you see in Greece, in in Greece, like, like muscle cells. cars. Like yeah, the it, uh, uh, n- not so much like drag race cars, but like you said, yeah, muscle like cars. Steve McQueen. Yeah, the f- yeah. And um, the 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 you know the stereotypical like light blue car with with a you know a Lucille Ball sure. chick driving it. You know, sure, like the Camaro. Yeah. And, your and and I was thinking, well. So those cars, they're like, even though they're classic cars, they're twenty grand, and you can buy it. And I'm thinking, fuck, you can buy a brand new Honda Civic, which is like the cheapest car you can get for twenty five grand. That's that's more than a classic car. How does that make sense? And the reason why it makes sense is because the insurance would be a lot since it's a classic car, and then the gas mileage would be really shitty. Sure. And I'm thinking, fuck, I would love to. T- I, I wouldn't give a fuck about ruining the classic car. I drive a fucking classic car to work every single fucking day covered in Chicago weather, blizzard, you know, condition. I would just be, I, I feel pimped out in it. Sure. But, but, but what I'm thinking is to solve that problem with gas, why not customize it and be like, I'm going to put a Honda Civic engine in there and or whatever and, you know, put make a core that's less heavier than whatever steel is in it now. Why not... What I'm trying to say is I'd like to have a car where how about a, I don't know, convertible Hummer that has a Honda engine that's got, instead of 20-inch rims, lawnmower wheels, you know? Why why the fuck not, you know? Well, I don't know anything about physics. Yeah. But I feel like if that would <laughs> work, I feel, like, I feel like if that'd be a thing, I feel like it would like be a thing by yeah. now. But I don't know, like if you're... Like I think you need that horsepower to to ch- to move well, that weight. Well, and well to move the weight and two to impress all the chicks. Oh yeah, you know, like who wants a muscle car that right? is uh, what are those like the hybrid? You know, who wants a hybrid muscle car? Come on, no, there's something well, very. Fuck, s- I mean, why not? I mean, it'll look cool and it'll be gas efficient. Yeah, but there's nothing sexy about being being gas efficient. Well, I mean, I'm just, how are you going to market this? Who's going to buy a D minor? Who's going to buy the uh, yeah, Hummer yeah. with the lawnmower wheels? Well, I, I mean, what I'm saying is that uh, well, Kelly shut it down. She said, "Well, when if if you were if there was somebody who committed a crime or crashed their car or robbed somebody, it'd be hard to describe. Oh, hey, here was this fucking convertible RV." that's built backwards but it's actually a you know oscar meyer wiener car like sure. you know it'd just be really difficult to describe that to the police well, i feel like don't you have to like register that sort of thing with like yeah license plates and it's like oh yeah and then and and you know when you get yeah when you get registration and when you get insurance it says on there like the brand the type the year yeah and you'd be like oh no this is uh this is a full car yeah, yeah that's right. what it's registered under so that that's what shuts down my idea. I mean, wouldn't it be fucking great to like roll into town? Oh yeah, and of course my 
the last time I mentioned it, my gun nut friend, he's like, yeah, well, you know, you can own a tank. I'm like, fuck yeah. What if you could customize that? Have a fucking tank with hydraulics, chrome plated with, with some, you know, subwoofers in there. Be bouncing in the town. You know. <laughs> You're listening to Two Knock Two Knock yeah, Ton. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> That, scare the shit out of everybody. That, scare the shit out of all those gun nuts. Make them more that, paranoid. That sounds expensive. Yeah. 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 I'll but, but that's what I'm saying. If I was fucking, if, if you were rich, wouldn't you customize your cars like that? I, um, did you ever watch Richard Scary's Busy Town? No, I've never heard of that before. It was like a, it was a kid's show. I think it maybe was a book, but yeah. it was like Lowly Worm. Do you remember like the worm with like the like leader hosen and like the, the feather cap? Did does no. That bring any, so anyway, I remember was, a worm with an army hat. Uh, maybe that Lowly changed his hats, but it was <laughs> Lowly Worm, and it was. Or maybe I'm thinking of Worms, the video game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that might be it. But no, there was this uh, monkey character, and his car was just like a really long banana, like yeah. convertible, like no top, and he would just cruise around town in his little banana car. Yeah. And if I, that's my dream car. I want that that monkey's banana car. Yeah. It's just like. Fuck yeah, dude. It's a banana car. Right? That, so I like where your head's at. But how are you going to market it? Exactly. Yeah. Some people, you know, they get the 20 inch rims to compensate for their small penis. Well, I'd be like, well, fuck. I got lawnmower, whims, lawnmower rims, but I still have a small penis. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not misrepresenting. You know? Sure. That's the curse. Uh, so the reason it's just Phil and I tonight, we were originally going to have a special guest named Chris. Uh, who at the very last moment was unable to join us. Do you know if Chris listens to the podcast? I think, uh, yeah, I definitely think he, well, maybe not. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> to be honest. So, so he's going to be on in probably the next episode, the one after, but I'd like to do a little bit of preparation. Okay. So like, what can you tell me about Chris? Like what? So I know Chris, um, to be honest, uh, I was actually kind of nervous because I, I don't know him that well, but I, but we, um, so he played in a grindcore band or, okay. or hardcore, whatever. Sure. I, I'm not sure how you would. That funk the, rock, it's all the yeah, same. Yeah. Funk noise, avant garde, <laughs> indie. <laughs> Pop, punk. Xylophone core, you know. That hard bop. <clears throat> and um, called Burn the Remains. They were actually very, very good, in my opinion. They, they, they toured a lot. I think they had, I think they opened for a few. Um, big bands, and then one of the one of his guitarists moved out of state. I'm, I don't really know the story. We'd have to ask Chris, but um, I knew uh, Chris because yeah, I liked his band. He played a lot of local shows, and then one of his members actually helped me out in um, producing some of the albums for my band. Okay. So, and Chris was always a, I I don't you, you know when you're Chris was a vocalist. Okay. I'm fucking great vocalist. He kind of reminds me of like that harshness. But also that aggressiveness of like Behemoth, or even like Cannibal Corpse, maybe I okay. don't know. May- maybe maybe he would not like that. <laughs> I don't know if he's particular, but but right. he he he's got a great great voice, and he's okay. I don't know, man. He just got he has a really tough look. He, he reminds me of the singer at Lamb of God. Okay, like just this what, Randy is is yeah, his yeah. name Randy. So um yeah that's that's Chris uh yeah. We miss you, man. Yeah, dude. Wish you were here. Wish you were here. All right. So, uh, um, do you know? Does he have any attractive sisters? This is I no, no. I don't know. I okay. don't know him that well. All right. Okay. So this is. Well, I just felt it would be. I'm actually kind of happy he's not here with us tonight. Yeah. Because he'd be like, "Hey, so I don't know you, and I don't know shit about you. Mm-hmm. So let's, or maybe that'd be fun. You yeah, know, that would like, be fun. That's that's why I think it was going to be a significant episode. I mean. Which will be. It's still a significant We're not rubbing episode. it in, Chris. That, yeah. Yeah. I but am. I'm rubbing it in. Okay. Fuck you. Good riddance. No, I don't mean that. I'm sorry. Um, but no, so we'll get him on the show. It'll be yeah. good. And in the meantime, it's just you and I. Yeah. Which is the way it started. And I don't yeah. know. It feels right. You I know, know um, so I've been having a lot of stress recently trying to be a good father figure for... Um, <laughs> Gavin. Okay. I'm not really sure if I'm doing the right things. Um, one of the arguments was, well, um, I've been having a lot of stress at work over random shit. And then, you know, you come home and you got to answer every little question that a 10 year old has. Why this? Why that? Why that? And 
So I've been really stressed out. So I decided um, to do the most fatherly thing. See, uh, so Kelly, um, she got a panda bear. Uh, do you, you you know build a bear, right? Yeah. For those of our listeners who don't know what build a bear is, you customize a teddy bear to whatever. I mean, it may be an event. Oh, hey, it's an anniversary, so you customize the bear in that way, or you just want a bear that's completely what you like as a bear. So Kelly's um, grandma, she got uh, her a Christmas uh, pan uh, build a bear where it has like an ugly Christmas sweater okay. and it's a pan bear and it's just Merry oh, Christmas. That's really cute. And I think that when you start it off online, they have like certain parts that are default. For example, I'm sure it's defaulted as a brown teddy bear, you know, mm. and it had for some reason it had blood red like Terminator eyes. And oh, I, I think that her grandma didn't notice that, so she didn't change it. <laughs> that so, sounds horrific. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so uh, Kelly really loves it for the because she doesn't get to see her grandma a lot. So she, she, you know, it's like meaningful to her to keep the bear. And so, so she gave it to Gavin, and Gavin is very, very, very terrified at a <laughs> ten-year-old imagination of it. <laughs> so in order for Gavin to listen to me, I've been, uh, you know, I wake up to work at 5 a.m. I like to place the bear in random areas in his room while he's sleeping. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> that, mm-hmm. Nice. You got to get a pair of teddy bear sunglasses. Yeah. To but but he doesn't, he's not afraid of it because of it appearing in his, he already thought it was going to attack him beforehand. I'm just kind of adding to the story. Sure. You know. Like an episode of Twilight Zone where like, the bear keeps moving. Like, yeah. Getting closer and closer. Yeah. Now it has a knife. Exactly. Like, Do you think I'm doing the right thing? Uh, definitely hands down right i think um i mean it's uh, uh you know it's better than believing in somebody nailed to a cross you know reviving <laughs> himself right the, that's a lot scarier to me the, oh yeah right now dead for three days and then it's just gone right like the fuck's up with that now he's and what he's made into chips that we eat now yeah at least you they're, know not, they're not even salted they, we don't know if they're organic you don't know it could at least be something good like fucking jalapeno crunchers you know <laughs> right yeah that uh, hey, you archdiocese. Think, you you think up. a guy named Jesus would be jalapeno crunchy, right? <laughs> well, depending on where you are, I don't know. Um, but the nice thing about the teddy bear is, you know, he can kill it. Like, yeah, right. You know, what takes one man to build takes only a second to destroy. Right. That's the safety in the teddy bear. Whereas the Messiah, like, or he'll never. Or die. as Gandhi said, a, a red eye for a red eye makes the world go blind. Yeah, I think that was the quote. Yeah, exactly right. Um, so good. No, I think you're definitely on the right track. Yeah. The thing is, like, kids don't come with instruction manuals. You don't know. We're all in this. Or, yeah. I mean, you're all in this. Uh, trying to figure it out, just doing the best you can. And I think Yeah. I think you're on the right track. Okay. Uh, has he told you about, like, any nightmares he's had about the bear? Actually, one of the funniest nightmares he's told me. Um, <laughs> not, 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 not about sure. the bear. Yeah. Uh, he's he's only told me about one weird dream that he had, and it's it's kind of funny because um he goes to this after school program where for like you know uh me and Kelly get out really late so he has to stay uh like three hours later after school, mm-hmm. and the supervisor of the program he's just a really good kid he's really got his shit together he's he's our age uh Wait. he's okay so he's the, the he's not a kid. No, no. Like the supervisor is like he's a really good guy. Okay, cool. Uh, he, he, um, um, I don't know if he has, um, he's he's. It's funny because he's he looks incredibly clean cut. I don't know if he has that disease of like no sweat glands because he's uh super bald and super shiny. Okay, you know what I'm talking about where you can't grow hair. Uh, baldness. No, no, not bald. No, it, no, like uh, what Derek had. You know where you can't have any uh, s- sweat glands. I n- I I never heard that from him. I oh yeah, yeah. I, I no. only heard that like secondhand. So like, yeah, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, no. There's the I fr- I don't know what it's called, but it, there's a disease where um it's more difficult to get uh, grow hair because you have no sweat glands. Sure. And you you can still grow hair, but it'll be in you know random air like like you'll have facial hair, but you can't. You, the rest of your body is. You look like a mannequin, you know, beca- okay. because you're. It's completely clean. The thing that sucks is I think when you get in the sun, you get so tired that you get uh, uh, heat exhaustion a lot yeah. quicker. But so he he looks super clean cut, and he's got these Yeezys on, and he always wears like brand new sports clothes. Yeezys? Yeah, you know what Yeezys are? No. 
they're really really fucking ugly gym shoes okay really fucking ugly i i got a bunch of friends who like them they're uh they're basically they're like kanye west they're kanye west yeah where the sole widens to the sides and outwards so they kind of look like you're wearing suction cups okay kind of reminds me of something that like squidward would have okay but any anyways um he said he had a dream about that guy being a professional rapper and uh he told him that he said hey i just had a dream about you you were a professional rapper he's like don't talk about that stuff in school (laughs) (laughs) so i thought that was kind of funny that that is funny so he's either a really good guy trying to keep that discipline or he's don't tell my secret you know right how do you know um i don't know maybe he was like don't tell people about the dreams you have about them because that's weird yeah maybe i had a really weird dream recently about me no, no, no. Oh. This was um it's never about I, me. But but it was it was so weird and that I loved it. It was a great trip. I wish I could have dreams like this all the time. It was actually right after I watched Twilight Zone too. Okay. Which episode? That, the first one, the pilot, The Last Man okay. on Earth. And um I was super stressed out so I had a little bit of weed. And I don't know if that affected it. I also gave I, I'm I'm gonna bitch. I'm gonna review and critique another show, but sure. I I, tr- I gave Twin Peaks a second chance, and I I cannot get into that shit. Okay. Um, but uh, so I don't know if David Lynch had a influence into my weird dream, but what happened? Probably the the, the the dream was um, me and Kelly were showing up at a convention, like some kind of uh, I don't know if it was like a book signing or we were we were showing up at a convention center, and for some reason this convention center was like. 40 or 50 feet away from a landing strip and uh i was telling kelly to hurry up the stairs because we're late and i look away and there a plane landed sideways and started spinning out of control and then it just crashed into the building like shrapnel going over my head going all over the place and then because that plane left shards on the strip every other plane after it started crashing and and there was just planes pieces flying in every direction and i couldn't find kelly for some reason, while I'm running around trying to look for Kelly, the guy that let us in the bill, the guy that was ke- ke- uh, checking for IDs, you know how, how like every convention they kind of like check if you got weapons, if oh, you, sure. if it's like a I don't know a political convention or or like a whatever, they um the, the, for some reason the person checking was Coach Hines from Mad TV, okay, and he's like you didn't let you didn't let me check your ID. You need to do that before you ask me any questions. I'm like, no, I'm looking for my girlfriend. He's like, no, you need me. To give, you need to give me your ID. So I gave him my ID. I'm like, can you help me now? Can you help me now? All right, I'm gonna go look. And he goes, yeah, I haven't seen her here. And he flicks it at my face. And I go, fuck you, you piece of shit. And he starts chasing me. <gasps> and as I start, as he starts chasing me, I I'm trying to get out as airplane pieces are flying everywhere. I find a Harley Davidson that okay. I just steal. And try to run away. As I'm running away, it turns from this landing strip uh, convention center to a, you know, when you're going, t- you know, you know, in movies, kind of like uh, Fear and Loathing, mm-hmm. where you're going downwards in a in like a, pl- I, I don't know if you call it a mountain or a plateau, where you're where you're going into like a canyon, and you're going in and out of like all these uh, plateaus, you know. Okay. So I'm going in this desert area, and I can't get around this traffic because there's a huge biker gang of like 20 midgets on mini Harley Davidsons. Okay. And so I finally get around them, and I go, I just crash at into this uh, random person's house, this family, and I walk into their house, trying to tell them, and they're like, "Oh, oh." are you staying here? Are you staying here? I'm like, no, no, I'm looking for my girlfriend. I don't know where she is. They're like, wait, how did you get here? I'm like, I, I, I just panicked. There's there's, there's all these planes crashing. I I, I, I had to steal this motorcycle. I'm like, oh, so you're a felon? You're a felon? You're getting kicked out. And then I woke up. It's just like, okay. So so I don't, I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't even know if I even want to look up online what the meaning to each possible thing means, you know? I'll tell you what it means. What does it mean? You're in love with your brother. Love with my brother. It's huh? obvious. The Harley. Fuck that the guy. The little people. What? The airplanes. Come on. It's. I the don't know. Fucking guy flicking my ID in my yeah. face. Me calling him a piece of shit. You need to get closer yeah, that's to my your brother. brother. 
It's, yep. it's time to get Robert on the show. Yeah. Was I supposed to say his name? <laughs> I don't know. I Maybe. think we've said it before. Yeah. And anyway, that's... I wish... I don't know. I know a lot of people that are very like dominated by their dreams and they get dreams every night and like they spend a lot of time thinking about it. And I I think I dream, I just never remember them. And like the last dream I had, I was in a shopping mall in Las Vegas. And I've never been to Las Vegas, but I knew I was in Las Vegas. And I had to shit really badly, going back to a theme of our prior episode. And I just couldn't find a bathroom. And it was like the worst nightmare I've had recently. Just I really had to poop and I couldn't find a bathroom in this Las Vegas shopping mall. I think what that dream means yeah, is tell me, please. Vegas is full of shit. Uh, maybe. I've never been. Have you been to Vegas? I think I went one time when my mom wanted to go. And it was just really fucking boring. It's not a place for kids. I, I went. I went yeah. in like... Mid high school, so there's not shit to do. Yeah. You know, it's like have fun in the hotel room. Yeah. Oh, look at this pool. There's a pool. Yeah. Fuck you. We're, yeah. We'll be back in nine yeah. hours later. Yeah. Right. Mom's in dead. Mom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> gotta go. Gotta go. Grab your things. We're going. Go. 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 <sighs> Can we please use your college fund, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much is your car worth? Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. So you're not getting me that hydraulic chrome tank. <laughs> right. That, but who are you going to market to? It's a good S- idea. Speaking of, um, uh, sorry, I, I wasn't going to. No, no, no. That was the end of the bit. <laughs> what were you going to say? Speaking of um, really fucked up car crash <laughs> shit. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. Have, I, have I ever told you about, uh, I'm not proud of this. Luckily, no one was hurt. My hit and run. Is this when you hit at Portillo's? It, what? There was a time. We're like, I think it was, I'm just going to let you tell your story and okay. we'll find out if it was the Portillo. No, no, no. There was no Portillo's in the story. I feel but. like you were on your way to the, the Jewel Osco and like the incident occurred outside of a Portillo's. And so you'd go into the Portillo's and be like, hey, has anyone, has anyone reported an accident lately? And they'd look at you like, what the fuck? Oh, you know what? That was part of it. That was, it? yeah, right, so that was. Spoiler because alert. All right. There sorry. Was, no. So, um. So I was in the middle of, uh, there was a, it was, so normally, I don't know if this is for our Ireland is, uh, listeners, I don't know if how, how roads are in Ireland, but normally when there's uh, four lanes in a road, then it's usually a highway. But you know, have you ever gone down 83 or Bussy, like in the suburbs? Like suburbs where? Like, like like I know Al- Bussy over by like the Jewel like, Osco. Like, well, no, no, like it goes all the way out to like Elk Grove Village and then okay, like yeah, Lombard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how it goes in like four lanes yeah. there and you can go pretty fast? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was in the middle of traffic and I was like so fucking stressed out because I was talking to Kelly uh, about there's some court shit going on that she was dealing with that I was trying to help her with. Then like I was six months unemployed, like so, so, and, and on one line I, I had a phone interview. On the other line I had, um, Trying to schedule another phone interview on the other line. Fucking Ross was calling me that <laughs> asshole. I miss no, him. No, so so I'm on four different lines and I'm like trying to pay attention to driving, and uh, I yeah I used to have a lot of road rage because I'm I'm in front of so I was driving a black oh maybe I shouldn't give descriptions in this anyways yeah. I was driving sure. a small sedan. Sure. Uh, and it wasn't you; it was your friend. Your yeah, friend yeah. was yes. driving the sedan. Yes. And there was a lady in front of my friend who was in like a white S large SUV. And I didn't realize till after the whole thing that she was just a really horrible, dumb fucking driver. And I thought she was fucking with me because so there's four lanes and I'm like in the middle and I'm trying to go around her so that I can turn. And each time I go, she swerves that way. And then I try and go the other way and tries to swerve that way. I think there's like really super, there's just certain drivers that are like super patriotic. So they try to act like a voluntary fucking police officer. Like, no, you're not, you ain't going over the speed limit. You ain't driving reckless. I'm, I'm going to uphold the law. And, and it helps that they have a large car. Yes, it does. <laughs> so, so I, I'm, I just keep trying to go around her and. Did she sound like that? No, no, oh. no, she 
No, but well, well, the, and and that's who I thought the driver was. But it was just a person who just really didn't know how to turn, put her fucking turn signal on, and switch lanes. So I'm like, all right, well, she's fucking with me. I'm gonna try and fuck with her. And I sped up and I tried to cut her off. The moment I tried to cut her off, she sped up. So I slammed into the side of her. I thought I dinged her. Like, I thought I just bumped her a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. She's going to have a little crack on her bump or something. And um, I was, all, at the same time, I was probably blasting something like Behemoth, which has a lot of double bass. Sure. So I didn't really hear how severe it was. So I dinged her a little bit. And I look in my review. I'm like, oh, fuck. She's, Fire's going. And, and I know. I'm like, <laughs> she's. Smoke's she, billowing. Well, 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 no, she stopped. And, and, like, she's getting out of her car. I'm like, oh, fuck. I got to get out of here. So I go, I go on the shoulder of, of like this road and I just speed the fuck away, just er, just drag race style, like through the red light, like turn out of there. And then I went to a Portillo's to try, oh, did anybody see anything? I, uh, I, I, I heard something back there. Uh, oh, that must've been, that must've been something in the garbage. Uh, it yeah. sounded like a bad accident. Yeah. There's, I, I, I heard there was some asshole who looked like my friend's car, but not my, you know, <laughs> but, and, and nobody heard about anything. And then, oh my God, I don't know if they, they probably don't have this in Ireland, but in this cunt of a country that or in fucking Chicago, they have red light cameras. That was the first time where I was like, please, I fucking hope I got a red light ticket. For those of you who don't know, a red light ticket is if you go through the red light, they take a picture of your license plate and they give you a ticket for passing through a red light. And you could actually get one if you don't if you're taking a right turn and you don't stop and you don't stop completely. Mm -hmm. You could get a ticket. So, so, but I don't know if you know, but when they give you the red light ticket, you know to make it easier to pay online. You know how whenever you get a ticket, you can um, debate whether you were guilty or not. Mm -hmm. Well, they also online, they give you the video. So I'm just looking at the video. Oh, sweet. I got out of that fucking accident full speed. You know. Anyways, I go home. I'm like, I'm, to I'm so fucking stressed out about work. I'm so, I'm so fucking tired. I, I tell my mom, I'm like, are people normally pull hit and runs, right? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, n nothing, Mom. I'm going to sleep. You know? <laughs> and, yeah, the next morning I wake up. I did because I, I, I was so tired and stressed out. I didn't even want to look at the damage. My whole back door was dented in to the point where you can't open it. Windows broken. I really fucked some shit up. And so I quickly went to this guy I know, you know, and he he fixed it up. Right away, you know, pop out the dent, huh. new window, air spray on the paint, and that whole fucking mechanic shop were just like, dude, what the fuck happened? And I'm like, oh, well, I- hey, mind your own fucking business, huh? How about <laughs> that, huh? No, I, I kind of, well, oh, I knew this guy. I'm like, I kind of pulled a hit and run. You could go to jail for that, right? He's like, what do you mean kind of? When did this happen? I'm like, yesterday. He's like, why the fuck didn't you bring it in yesterday, man? I, I could hook you up. I'm like, well, I, I kind of didn't notice until this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the fuck were you on, man? <laughs> Share that shit, you know? <laughs> so, what? luckily nobody got hurt. Exactly. And, and yeah, that's it, what matters. And the, and the funniest part is that I was telling this story to a person at work. Yeah. Or were they just disgusted? <laughs> and the, the whole row was quiet. But the one person that I was telling to, they were so nervous. They're like, wait a minute. You hit a car, right? Not a person? <laughs> 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 is, is, is she alive? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, you wound up finding a good job. You've got a new car. Yeah, right. Things are looking up. That's what you got to do in this country to get a good job. You got to pull a hit and run. You got to get away with it. You got to make sure you take all the little, you know, little steps to yeah. make sure that you're not guilty. And, you'll and, and not tell it on a podcast because this was all my friend, by the way. <laughs> right. Exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Um, but all's well that ends well. Um, so last night I was hanging out with my friend Liz and she invited two of her friends over and it was one of those situations where I've only known Liz for four months, maybe like if that, Yeah. and the two friends that were over there with her, like they've known each other for decades. 
yeah. is one of those things. So it's like, all right, I want to make a good impression. And I think yeah. I'm a pretty, like, I'm a decent guy and I'm a fairly competent conversationalist. Uh, but, like, I kept trying to crack jokes. Yeah. And in hindsight... Like, were, you, were you one of those people, like how you said Drew, where you were just putting, just cracking fucking lines each A little bit. Iteration? A little bit, but not like... Not like over the top. It's not like, hey, you guys are talking about this. Here's something completely unrelated, and I'm going to shout at you. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad, um, and we were all pretty baked. So like, just silences would come on, and I would be like, all right, Bill, it's up to you. Make a good impression. Let's break the silence. And one of the things I said, and I, yeah. think, and I'm still thinking about this, and I don't know if it's sh- like, I think it's a topic for discussion, is, so like, do you think there's Yelp reviews for prisons? I, yeah, that's that, that's a valid question. That and I think it's funny. Like Google search like Danville State Prison, and like oh, this prison only gets three stars out of five. You yeah. know, here's their address or here's their address. Here's their hours. And you know, like if you Google a restaurant, it'll have like a cute little blurb about it, like yeah. a convivial nautical themed restaurant. Yeah, you know, it's like oh, Danville, like a minimum security, like federal enforced, whatever. So. I love it the way they have organic, locally made soap here. Even if you drop it, it makes it worth it. <laughs> exactly right. So that was, um, I don't know. I think all in all, I did okay. But I wound up spending the night over there. And her friends left. And then it was just me and Liz kicking it. And I was like, hey, is it cool if I spend the night? And she was like, yeah, that, that won't be a problem. And I was like, cool. So like, we go to bed. And she's like, you get in first. Because she's got like a queen bed, but it's up against the wall. Yeah. And I'm I'm like, okay. So I get in the bed. And she's like, no, you have to go further against the wall. And I was like, okay. So I keep moving. And she's like, no, literally like against the wall. So like now like I'm laying with my back against the wall, you know, like laying on my left side. Yeah. And she's like, okay, perfect. And then she puts down a body pillow parallel with me and like pushes it against me. And then she lays on the other side of the pillow. And it's like, uh, 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 uh all right. Yeah. What, what the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Looks like I'll spoon with the pillow. I don't was know. Was that just like uh I'm not in the mood pillow type thing? I don't know. I don't know, but it's like did I fuck something up like but anyway, and this is all a big Maybe you're up. supposed to take charge on that pillow is what you <laughs> wanted. <laughs> yeah, right. You were supposed to take initiative. Right. Um but the build up is uh it's a joke I want to pitch, frankly. And the joke is this, and that was the build up for the joke. It's like I don't know, man. Dating is a lot like backgammon. Like, I just don't fucking get it. Yeah, I was I was about to say, man. That like, uh, I don't get it. I don't know. You okay. know, I've heard this thing um, that there's like a uh, for years, and it's really weird. I, I read an article on it that for years there's there was just one set of rules specifically made for like women going on dates that like you don't fuck until the third date or something. Like that was like the set rule. I don't know. That sounds like some people probably still adhere to that. I don't know. There are some yeah. people that don't fuck until marriage. Yeah, like, right. Go figure. Yeah. Uh, and with Tinder around these days, some people that fuck in the first five minutes probably. I, you know. Yeah, right? Like, I don't know. It's all over the place. Oh, you opened my door instead of me having to get it for you. You know, that right. was so hot. <laughs> Let's right. do it now. Yeah. Ooh. Um. Yeah, so... I don't know. I'm not offended, but it's just like, did I? I thought like the whole evening was like kind of building up to at least some mild cuddling. Yeah. But right. like, no, I'm like. Speaking of, um, or I'm, I don't know if I'm cutting you off. No, no, no. Go Speaking for it. of board games, have you, okay. <laughs> oh, backgammon. Gotcha. Ha, board ha, games. Okay. Yeah. This might be back to me ranting for two hours on politics. No. All right. I'm sorry. It better Let, not be. No, no, no. No. Okay. But have you seen it's 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 funny because it's it's a mockery of what is today. Have you seen this guess who video no. of two guys playing? No. No. Have I told you about it? Honestly. No. Like yeah. No. I haven't told you about it at all? No. Okay. So there's a funny video. Um I, I really love it. It was perfect in taste for me. And guess who is the game where like there's all the pictures Yeah. All the pictures of the faces. Yeah. And, like you like is it a man? No. Yeah. Thup, 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 oh here, here. Let me, uh, I'm going to put you in my... All right, there perfect. We go. Well, I just bopped it away with my nose. Yeah. So, 
Anyway, um, the sound effect is thop, 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 yeah, thop, yeah. thop, 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 That's not, you better not be doing another fucking impression, Ross. Come on. <laughs> no, no, it's Lo- not. This law's drumming. Fuck him. <laughs> No, but anyway, no, the the uh yeah, you you do that and, and it and it says here's how guess who is played in 2018. And it's two like really hipster fucking white guys playing and they're like um is your person black? He goes, "What? Oh, excuse me? You be All right, is is are they African American? No, African <sighs> What did you just say? No, is your person of color? Th- that's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. And then the next guy, he's like, "All right, it's your turn." Or no, you get you get three tries to go. All right. Um, is your person a hot chick? It's like what? And then he grabs his card. He's like, "Are, are you are you feeling uncomfortable? Are you feeling uncomfortable right now?" It's like you know you can't yeah. like you can't play it in two thousand eight. And then I think the the last one was kind of funny. He goes, "Um, all right, is your person?" how do I say this genetically inferior to other people um, f- from the brows up? What the fuck does he's like, what the fuck does that mean? Uh, all right. He's a little bit. He was, um, has a little bit in his genes that make him a little bit colder during the cold seasons. All right, motherfucker. Is he bald? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bald shaming <laughs> you know and that's and it was so funny because after the weirdest thing after i watched that video there's actually like idiots who are looking for reasons why games can be offensive because what i found out recently is people got mad about um monopoly saying that there's going to be a revised version saying that like you don't get a second chance when you're out of jail. <laughs> you know, shit like that. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? And then, and then I've, I get, I'm just waiting for somebody to bitch about how, like, if, oh, well, look at all these different segregated properties and some are lo- more expensive than others. Real estate is a perfect, you know, example how things get Im- impoverished, you know, or, or are manipulated in order to be impro- I mean, I guess that could be a valid argument, but it, dude, at the end of the fucking day, it's a fucking board game. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, but and I, I agree don't know. with you. I thought it was just kind of a funny thing. Can I can I tell a really funny story? Mm mm. Can your turn? Nope, sorry, no funny stories here. Only no funny. Can sad. I, can I Okay, can I tell you a really Awkward and shaming story and depressing story for the mood. Does yeah? Does it fit into our seasonal depression theme? Seasonal dep- Um, let me let me just go over it real quick. <laughs> I don't care, dude. Tell it's kind of de- story. It's it's kind of depressing. Don't care. Say whatever you want. Oh, I don't pissed off. Why now? <laughs> no. It, okay, so I was invited for a. My girlfriend um has a friend named Mary. So, so we might have, I might have to mention a bunch of names in order to follow along. But so my girlfriend's best friend is Mary. She was having a surprise party, and I'm sure they're never going to watch this thing, so they won't get offended. But any, anyways, they um, we hate them all. Yes. Ma- so we were throwing a surprise party. Her sister was throwing a surprise party for her. So Mary's we- sister was throwing a surprise party for, for Mary. Mary. Yes. Okay. I forgot what Mary's sister's name is. I don't know. We'll call her uh, Penny. I don't know. And anyway, so 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 she's throwing um a party, and so everybody showed up early to sort of you know, hey, it's your birthday, it's give surprise. her a cake straight to the face, you know, like, yeah. and so I show up, and I forgot that um you know I got horrible fucking memory. Kelly had told me a while back that Mary's sister, because we actually ran into Mary's sister at the zoo. One of her children is, uh, they have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And the four-year-old uh, girl, she, they don't really talk about it. Um, I think she might have, she's either autistic or has seizures all the time. Okay. So, like, so for like exa- some sort of developmental. Yeah. And and they keep telling everybody that they haven't found out yet because it's really, I don't know, it's just really sad. It's, I mean, she's four and she just learned how to walk. She doesn't really react to anybody like talking to her or saying anything you know um it's it's really sad i don't don't know it's just really sad because because the two-year-old is already walking and talking and everything you know yeah so she's i feel like she might be very alienated you know sure and the parents both of them are national guard so they're sort of like this i mean i guess you know the 
very uh typical like you know gung ho marine tough and just very macho the type typical people typical gung ho national guard yeah yeah uh, so so ura well I, yeah, yeah i i don't i don't know i don't even i'll be honest i don't i'm not educated enough about military to know like national guard and mil- i know national guard is more like uh security for military buildings right i don't know i well a- a- anyways they're they're super um whatever i'm trying to say <laughs> anyways uh i completely did not i forgot about this whole story that you know one of the children is a little behind sure so i show up to this party and here i am trying to be social trying to not for once have a fucking foot in my mouth shit and the dad has the daughter on his shoulders have i told you about this that you've told me but i don't think the podcast okay yeah and the daughter is the one who has the developmental problems is staring at the ceiling fan for about 20 minutes, hair in every direction like the exorcist, drooling all over the place, just food all over her. And I go, oh, yeah, hell yeah, this is a party. That's how I looked when I was for New Year's. That's exactly how I looked. And the dad's just like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? And then here, you know, I am. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, there was a National Guard guy holding me on his shoulders, and I had too much pizza. I didn't, I, you know. <laughs> so that was a great way to enter that party. Yeah, but. nice. So you and the father became best of friends. Yeah. Luckily, we um we softened the party up by watching a lot of uh, Mark Gormley videos. I think I told you about that. Yeah the yeah the green screen. Yeah, the green screen. Uh, I, g- acoustic guitar god. I yeah, but that was my foot in mouth story. Yeah. Oh, wait, I have another funny story. Oh, do tell. Or another depressing story. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't think I don't know if I ever told you about this, but um, I hope it wasn't because of me. So, have you ever gone to Naperville? Yes. Do, have you ever heard of the bell tower there? Yes. And did I tell you about this or no? The, keep going. Okay. Anyways, I so Naperville is a a little bit higher c- class suburb, I would say. There's fucking like three floor mansions out there. It's very very high class, and they have this public park there that is absolutely beautiful. I'm pretty sure you get fined like quadruple the amount that you would anywhere else because it's just super maintained. They have a lot of wild animals living there. That wait, fight for what? Fine for littering there. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, oh, yeah, the, I didn't mention it. But, uh, yeah, it's just super, super clean. Um, You get fine. They have a lot of, uh, like, I was trying to catch some really rare frogs they had in the ponds there. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's just very beautiful. It's like something out of, I don't know, The Sims. <laughs> and they have a bell tower there. Looks badass as hell. I fell in love immediately. It looks like some shit straight out of Skyrim or Lord of the Rings. It looks like that tower that uh, that Gandalf fights the um, the evil lord on top of. You know what I'm talking about or no? Uh, yeah. And um, Saruman. <clears throat> yeah. So I uh, the guy who's like in metal bands or something, right? Um. Yeah. The late Christopher Lee. Yeah. 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 So I heard that there's bells in there and that they have a tour for it. So I'm like, oh, that'd be really, really fucking interesting. Let's go. So the story about this bell tower is that uh, this guy built this. Uh, it, it's really, really tall. I forgot how tall it is, but it it's about, I would say, seven to ten house, average houses on top of each other. And it uh, goes over the whole city. And every weekend, it, I think every four hours, it's programmed to a computer to play like a really nice song for the whole town. Um and do 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 yep do 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 no 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 not like that like they'll actually play uh uh any I mean any song you can request they could play like uh Ode to Joy or something uh, like singing in the rain Faith by George Michael uh actually yeah you you know if you you could rent out the park for a private party okay. and request songs to be played by, by yeah, the... Yeah, for the low, low price of how many tens of thousands of dollars? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so I'm going on this tour, going up the stairs, and they're explaining to us how, like, each bell was very intricately, you know, masoned and... Uh, so you went on a tour of it? Yeah, I, I went on a tour uh, on a tour of the bell tower. 
to explain how like how the, the how long it has been there, why it was built. I guess it was built on um one of the only places in the US that has really uh very um rare lime rock or something like limestone? Yeah, li- like a quarry? Yeah. They, they they said they uh uh there was like a f- 300 400 foot no it was like 2 mile deep hole that they dug for limestone cuz it was like one of the biggest concentrations there and then like afterwards they were like oh well how, what the fuck are we going to do with this hole yeah we got a big old hole here so, so they they made uh like like a man made beach yeah. there <laughs> they, they grabbed their garden hoses and just filled it up yeah, yeah. They, they they have they have a beach there that um has like a wave uh uh pool there that you go like like you Weird. can surf there and shit. Okay. And uh we yeah, we went on like a paddle boat. You could have a a canoe and all this um That's cool. All this, so it's so it's cool. But but so I, so we're in this bell tower and the lady says, "You know, these uh there's there's a huge piano layout where they pretty much replicated a piano, uh, the way it's set up with the keys, and instead of strings, it hits the different notes of the bells. Okay. And she's like, you know, there we're going under repair. Uh, we're going. We we might need to go under repairs because it hasn't been syncing good with the computer songs, and uh, the keys they're like the size of a fist. And you actually have to play them with a fist. You have to like punch them down and shit. If you, okay. it, it, they have uh, people who know how to play it that that go there and play it when whenever it's like a private party and be yeah. like, hey, I, I want you to play. It's a hard knock life, you know. Yes. So so of course I go. Uh, are we allowed to play? It? She says, well, I'm just a tour guide, but it, where it's definitely prohibited. Go, oh, okay, you guys just keep walking. And Kelly and the short guy kept walking. And I played for the whole town the Jeopardy theme song. <laughs> the thinking, do, 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 do. And um, then she caught me Yeah. So once I got to that part. Called security. Yeah. The <laughs> and the best part is a uh, few days ago, I was looking it up just to be like, oh, I wonder... How is it? What is it? What do they do with it yeah, in the what's winter? What's going on with the bell tower? Yeah, and apparently there's a uh, repair needed that's going to be costing three point eight million dollars for the <laughs> town. So let's just say I hope the Jeopardy theme song didn't ruin that. I am. Um, I'm yeah. actually happy you brought that story up because it falls right into our theme of seasonal depression. Because can you imagine a more depressing job than being a bell tower tour guide? <laughs> like. Just all right. Here's a bunch of stairs. All right. Yeah. Here are the bells. Any questions? Bell. No. No one ever has any questions. <laughs> that. But it was a nice time. A nice romantic. Yeah. Cardio exercise yeah. with. I'm the still trying bun. to think of a more depressing job than a bell target. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of it. It's hard to think of. I'm sure they're out there. Actually. When I was looking for a job uh, during that six-month unemployment, sure. there was a job. It, it was seasonal, which is why I didn't take it. There was a job where you just ride a bicycle from town to town, and you take <laughs> uh, eye droplet samples of each body of water in order to measure the uh, everything, the, the parasites in the water, whether it's good or not. or Yeah, like the content, the pH. Yeah, which I guess... I don't know. That might be cool, but I don't know if that's really. Oh, hey, I, I got to go drive to all these ride to all these fucking ponds twenty miles apart and just get gra- gather some water, and then I'm gonna be unemployed in the next three months. You know, I, I don't know. I bet there are people that'd be super into that man, like conservation and things. Oh yeah, it it w- it would be cool, but I'd feel like if I did that, you know, where do you move up from there? Yeah, right. Especially if you don't have any like college education. Oh, listen, I know how to ride a bike and gather water. Okay, you definitely want me in, as an accountant in this job. You that know? right? Yeah, it's um, I don't know, Jimmy John's delivery bikers. Yeah, say <laughs> that moving on up. Like, no, dude, no more sandwiches, no more people, just me and ponds. Yeah, it's I'm a doctor. Damn it, I'm a scientist. So, 
Uh, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Um, gotta say, I ate a lot of White Castle. Not feeling super great. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, Are you sure it's the white? Don't blame your depression, yeah. seasonal depression on White Castle. Okay? That, no, I thought White Castle was the cure for the seasonal depression. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> you know, um, so I, I, I feel like I, I went into a little bit earlier, but um, off the podcast. But I feel uh, like so recently I've had really, really, really horrible fucking anxiety. Really horrible anxiety. And a lot of it has been just people bringing up politics at work. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, not even, no, it's just people debating over dumb shit. And, you know, I just. Like, what job is more depressing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what job is. Yeah, man, why are you bringing up that dumb shit? No, but it's just, yeah, you just are. Not even, or, or whether art schools should exist. You know, it's a viola, it's not a violin. Just shit like that. People, no, people just get get really offended easily these days, and a lot more sensitive. And I feel like when um, I feel that a big reason how seasonal depression affects people, like winter, I think it has a lot to do with just people don't go out and do shit. Sure. And 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 not only that, but in the sense of like for me specifically, I think it's I need to have an adrenaline rush because for a while, um, it's like. I can. I'm complete. I, I think I'm a pretty social person. Like if you go to a party or if we're at the bar, or something, I, I sure. think I speak pretty well. Yeah. And I didn't understand how there'd be certain moments where I'd be talking with people, and I just get like, I fr- either freeze up or I get really super shaky, and I didn't know what it was. And I realized what it was was just dumb fucking topics like politics. So I read up on this, and it's not social anxiety. It's um, high blood pressure during confrontation. Okay. You know. Which which really blew my mind because I'm like, holy fuck! I get I put myself, you know, oh, I go to a show and go to a mosh pit where I could get completely trampled or into a fight. I wonder why I have anxiety. Sure. Or you know, but I, but on the other hand, I was thinking maybe adrenaline rushes help people who have d- depression because it's sort of like I don't know if if you threw somebody, um, you know, when you have somebody, for example. I used to go out a lot more. I used to party a lot more. You know, getting older, no, sure. no, nobody goes out anymore. If you threw somebody who's super fucking depressed, right, mm-hmm. and you threw them into some, I don't know, battlefield or dropped them off in some really gang-ridden neighborhood, I'm pretty sure that would spark them out of their depression and be like, I got to run. I, I got to get the fuck out of here, you know. One would hope. Uh, like, it, like it wouldn't um slow them down, you know, if you throw them in the middle of, I don't know, Gaza Strip or something, you know. Right. Mike, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, I'll be sad later, but I'll be yeah. alive. I think that, I, and I think that's how I cope with my anxiety. I go skiing on the highest fucking slope right away, or I go skydiving, or I try and get away with a hit and run, you know? Sure. I don't know. And you succeed. Es nest nam